Hello. So, I'm about to do a full lab calibration with this uh, DMM check from Doug Malone. It does a, a voltage, current, and a resistance uh, reference for use for your multimeter. Uh, but I figured first I would do a quick review on this Power Designs Model 2020B Precision Power Supply. Um, I'm not going to lie, part of the reason why I bought this thing is really how it looks, because I made mean, a look at it. Nice aluminum front panel, aluminum knobs, oh yeah, good stuff. Uh, but anyways, I managed to find the manual for it. Here is the specs. I have the 2020B, as you can see here, it's got pretty good regulation, pretty good noise and uh, pretty good everything really. Uh, it can only do about 2 amps out. I've managed to pull 2.2 .2 amps but uh, I wouldn't do that for too long. Um, by the way I got the manual on KO4BB's uh, website. Here's the URL. So thank you. And uh, let's take a look at how it works. Um, so obviously around the front you've got you know, the main power, so that's pretty useful. It's not something like in the back or anything like that. You've got, <clears throat> you know, your standard uh, jacks here. Fortunately, the DC plus and minus are next to each other, so you can use the, uh, you know, the, the two prong adapters for, you know, B and C or whatever it is that you want to use. Down here is your current limit. Um, it's not uh, calibrated, so you'll have to use the meter. Um, but fortunately, uh, there's this feature which I really like. You just pull it out when you want to set the current and you push it back in when you're done setting. So if we turn it on, you know, give it some voltage, we set it to amp mode. This is your voltage and current selector. Not a big fan of the single display or the single meter. I much prefer these kinds where you have both voltage and current, but anyways. Um, you can pull this and you can set the current and when you're done you just push it in and you're set. Uh, this is a little peculiar, peculiar and you have to manually set the range so if you want to set uh, your voltage from 0 to 10 volts you push it to the left 10 to 20 volts you push it to the right but uh, I think they've done this properly this is actually uh, locked into place unless you actually pull this and move it over and then release so you can't accidentally uh, swat this and you know explode your delicate electronics uh, because you accidentally switched the range. Uh, here obviously the main attraction this is the obviously voltage selection so it does four digits um, as you can see now we're saying we want 6.040 volts um, so you can just turn these and set whatever voltage you want. Very nice. My only complaint is that these are a little hard to turn, but uh, it's not a huge deal. And you can actually get a fifth digit by turning this one. So you can get pretty accurate voltage. Unfortunately this thing is out of cal, which is why I'm doing this uh, calibration in a minute, but uh, that should come up just fine. Uh, round the back, it's not very interesting, here we go, you can see that, um, you got you know the specs down here, you got your fuse, uh, you've got your DC out, and you've got uh, remote sense in case you need to do that, and you've also got remote programming, so if you get rid of these two links here that are down there, uh, you can actually feed an arbitrary voltage into this power supply and it will present that voltage uh, as its output. So uh, if you have that requirement, you can do that. But why would you not want to use these knobs? They're fantastic. Oh, and I forgot to show one thing. When it's in current limit, it blinks. So, just because Let's uh, hook up this little, <clears throat> excuse me, this little motor here. Little red line for a good time. Anyways, enough with this fairly crude thing. 
let's see what it behaves like. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to 5 volts. It won't be exactly 5 volts because this is rather out of calibration. Still getting the hang of these controls. <laughs> Not much to get a hang of, but you know, whatever. And uh, let's test its power on characteristics. I'm just going to flick the power switch here. We'll see what it does. Alright, so pretty good. So it doesn't seem to have overshot. Let me turn down the uh, time scale again. Alright, so that's pretty good. So without any load, it took, oh, let's say, you know, almost 0.4 seconds to. Uh, to boot up, which is admittedly quite a long time. Let's try it again with the current limit set all the way up. Exactly the same. So not the quickest starting up power supply, but uh, it definitely doesn't overshoot, so that's good. Alright, so uh, here we go with uh, the transients upon switching the uh, voltage. Um, I've got it here triggering at fairly slow speed as you can see by the uh, blink there. So definitely seems to drop out for a second as I turn it but only for a little tiny bit. So let me single sweep that and catch it. Yeah, the going down looks just fine. Very clean. Let's go look Oops. Yeah, and the going up looks fine just as well. Here is where I turn it down, and here is where I turn it up. So, no serious transients on uh, adjustment, so that's good. Alright, so let's do some more quick tests uh, on this turn on performance here. So, here I've got uh, a 100 ohm load, uh, just a resistor. Uh, and I've got it set to its maximum voltage, so that would be 9.9910 um, with of course the uh, mode switch switched over to the uh, 20 volt setting. Turn up this all the way, although that will make much difference with uh, you know this guy. Uh, current limit turned all the way up and I'm going to flip this power switch and we're going to see what it does. Uh, I've cut this thing to, what is it? Uh, Whoa, 0.2 seconds per division. So let's go. All right, so let's do some measurement here. It's not looking good. So to get this thing to get up to, say, remember it's set to 20 volts. If we set one to get to 18 volts, say, gee, that's how long it takes. And that's in seconds. So definitely not the quickest turn on and that's with the load let's try disconnecting the load real quick see what happens there and it's much of the same actually it's pretty much exactly the same <laughs> let's try it again just a second alright let's try this again no load maximum volts and well, yeah. It's even a bit slower. Great, well, now let's try the current limit behavior. So I'm going to pull this out uh, to simulate, you know, shorting out this thing into current limit. I'm going to push this in and we're going to see what this does. So watch the trigger light. Three, two, one. Triggered. <laughs> it's very consistent, as you can see. It was triggered. And this is a new waveform, so at least it's uh, predictable, which is, I suppose, what this is made to be. Alright, as a final quick thing, let's check out the noise performance. Now, the spec says 100 uh, microvolts peak to peak uh, noise. Uh, so I've hooked it up uh, without using the ground clip, of course, with a same 100 ohm load. Um, and here we go, this thing is set to. 50 millivolts um, per division and well looking at this it doesn't quite match the spec but eh, 
you know, really, I'm not sure I trust my scope probe. The probe itself was a really cheap one. I need to buy some new ones. Um, my nicer ones broke, unfortunately. Uh, so, I would say it's definitely good enough for me. I definitely don't care too much about the low noise performance of this thing. So, I hope it was useful. If you're considering buying this thing, um, I would definitely recommend it. If you need super fast turn on times, uh, it might be a problem. Uh, by super fast, I mean, you know, less than 100 milliseconds or so, uh, where this admittedly falls down quite flat. Um, but anyways, hope you liked, and uh, I'll see you next time.